I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at a table in the house of the Pharisee, bringing an alabaster flux of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped with them, with her, her, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owned five hundred days wages, and the other owed fifty. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave them for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one I suppose whose large debt was forgiven. He said to him, You have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she was bathed. She has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint in my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other at the table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In this Gospel that we just heard, it's very interesting because it's talking about a topic that the person who loves the most, the person that loves the most, is that person the come to know that he has been forgiven much. On the other hand, the other person who knows that has been forgiven little, that person is only capable of loving little. You and I, we know that and we are certain that we have committed many sins, that we have failed our Lord, and we have come before Him asking for forgiveness and we come before Him with a grateful heart because we know that we have been forgiven much and we aim to love our Lord much, to love our neighbor much. Because just as St. John in one of his letters says that we are liars if we say that we love God, but we don't love our neighbors. That is why it's so important to love to aim to love our neighbors and also and certainly to love God in the first place. Turn your tears, tears into an offering, the healing power of repentance. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, we are present with the sinful woman who upon hearing that Jesus was dining at the house of the Pharisee did not hesitate to go to him. We do not know the details of her sins, nor does it matter. What is important is that she acknowledges her condition. As scripture tells us, she was a sinful woman, and that is enough. 
This woman had heard about Jesus, his miracles, his teachings. She knew who he was, and therefore she approached him without hesitation. She brought with her an alabaster jar full of perfume, and with deep repentance began to cry at Jesus' feet. With her tears, she wept and wiped his feet, drying them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the perfume. This sin invites us to reflect on our own attitude towards sin. It is not enough to ask for forgiveness. It is not enough to ask for forgiveness. We need to go over that. We need to go beyond that. And why? Because if we are only moved by repentance, that is good to have repentance, certainly. But if, if we are only moved by repentance because we will face a condemnation, if we are only moved by fear, it is not right. It is not a good attitude if we are only moved by fear. We should be moved by love. I am repent and I ask God to forgive me because I have offended Him with my sins. And I feel repentance out of love for God because I know that I have done wrong and I want to do good. I want to love Him. And in a way to show that I want to love Him, a way to show that I want to be a grateful person towards Him is to ask for forgiveness, to feel repentance out of love, not out of fear. We must also feel genuine sorrow for our faults. Just as this woman cried over her sins at the feet of Christ, we too should weep for our offenses against God. Even though we may not have an expensive perfume, our tears of repentance, pain, and suffering are a precious offering at the feet of Christ. A woman burdened by the loss of her husband felt she could not move forward. Day after day, she cried alone in her room, questioning why God had allowed her to endure so much suffering. One day, in her desperation, she decided to go to church. There, before the crucifix, she knelt and taught her tears. Through her tears, said to Jesus, I have nothing left to offer you but this pain that consumes me. In that moment, she felt at peace. She had an experience in months. She realized that in giving her pain to Jesus, He was healing her, transforming her suffering into hope. She understood that her tears, like those of the woman in the gospel, were a valuable offering at the feet of Christ, and that in time, He will turn them into joy and consolation. Each one of us carries our own burdens, the pain of illness, the loss of a loved one, financial difficulties, family problems, or the injustices we face. These sufferings can be transformed into an offering like the perfume of that woman. Our tears, when offered to Christ, have the power to purify it. Just as the tears of that woman cleanse Jesus' feet, those feet that walk through so many towns to heal, to teach, and to announce the good news. Dear brothers and sisters, if today you find yourself in a moment of difficulty, if life presents you, presents you with seemingly insurmountable trails, I invite you to turn those problems into an offering. Let the tears you shed day after day be used to wash the feet of Christ. Offer Him your pain. Let Him heal your wounds, because He accepts each tear as a precious offering. None of them are in vain, as the Lord receives them and transforms them into joy, gladness, and hope in eternal life. The Lord tell you today, come to me, 
all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us come before the Lord so we can find rest, and let us offer Him this valuable perfume that could be our good actions in a response of gratitude. Amen.